Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan, and today I'll be talking about Pokemon. Um, I'm sure you're all aware of the Pokemon franchise. It is everywhere, and in fact is the largest media franchise in the world. It was first released in Japan in 1996 with the Pokemon Red and Green games on the original Game Boy, and it has grossed an estimated $59.1 billion worldwide through all of its different media. And when I say all of its different media, there is a lot. There are the video games, of course, which started all. There's manga, anime, the trading card game. There's been theatrical films, um, especially the recent Detective Pikachu, which was the first live-action Pokemon film made in America. Um, and all kinds of other merchandise, like plushies and action figures. And even behind me, I have a couple of... Pokeball things. I like Pokemon a lot. And Pokemon gave us uh, Rowlet, who is my perfect round son. So how could anything bad come out of a company like Pokemon that gave us so something so cute and perfect and adorable? Well, um, the franchise has actually created many careers for people who are not directly working for Nintendo or Game Freak, who are the publisher and developer of Pokemon, respectively. There have been fan sites like Cerebi.net at Maryland, and those sites have been going... Cerebi.net's been going for 20 years now. Um, it is a huge repository of all information Pokemon. And the creator of the site, Joe Merrick, that's his career. That's how he makes all his money, and he's very well-renowned among Pokemon fans. But the group of people I want to talk about mostly today are the Poketubers, who are essentially YouTubers or Twitch streamers who create their entire channel based on something like Pokemon. Based on Pokemon specifically. Um, and I think that's very interesting for this particular course because it's a very interesting relationship between fans and the media industry. But there is also the problem of copyright, which has been very strenuous with Nintendo. They're, they launched a creators program a while ago, which was supposed to help YouTubers, but it took 30% of their revenue, and they still got copyright strikes on their channel no matter anyway, even if they were part of the program which was very bad for these Poketubers' careers. And basically, YouTube has an automated copyright finding system called Content ID that detects certain content and automatically flags it for the company to review. And Nintendo is known for having sort of very draconian opinions on their thing, on, their, um, on the use of their media. Um, Let's Plays, which is people commenting over a video game while they play it, have been huge for a while now, and Nintendo is the only company that still consistently gives people issues with that, with their copyright strikes. Um, it's loosened up in recent years, but it still puts risk to the people who are doing these for their careers. Um... This also creates a debate over whether or not Let's Plays fall under fair use because technically they are transformative content and technically can be reviews, which do fall under fair use. So that is a huge discussion. And what I want you to take away from what I'm talking about here today is to think about these four questions. Think about any other series that has had the huge impact that Pokemon has where Fans can make their entire careers off of, based off of this franchise, because I can't think of any, ever, except a few YouTubers who do their entire channel on Minecraft, I can't think of anything else. Um, think about how copyright law has affected you personally, maybe if you're a creator or something, or you've uploaded videos to YouTube and you've gotten a copyright strike for it. Um, and I also want you to think... Who is in the right in these copyright disputes legally, and who is in the right in these copyright disputes morally? Thank you for watching my video, and I hope it was interesting and informative.